Howdy friendos, and welcome to the character who officially broke me this year. Today we will be looking at Jinx from Netflix's Arcane, a League of Legends story. And uh, just as a heads up, I um, get a little heavy this episode. As soon as I watched the ending of episode 9 of this series, I wrote the outro to this video first in a manic fury. So just like in my Deltarune video, I go very hard on the outro and I got a little personal about my thoughts and for reasons that will be made clear, I found that I identified hard with Jinx from this series. If you only want to stick around for the Ding Dings this time around, I actually fully understand. I kind of hate it sometimes when people spill their guts online and yeah, it, it comes off as a little pretentious and self-serving and I get it. I'll talk about her personal journey, of course, but I'm almost ashamed to admit that this piece of fictional weed bait just got to me so much. Anyway, let's introduce the character. Jinx, or as she's known at the beginning of the series as Powder, and her sister Violet were born in the Undercity of Piltover, otherwise known as the Lanes, or Zaun, as it will become to be known by many characters. At the beginning of the series, we learn that her family was killed during a revolution gone wrong and were taken in by Vander along with two of her adopted brothers, Milo and Klagor. Years go by as they survive as street rats by stealing and doing other underhanded things. Although she is accepted by her family, Powder is often called a jinx by her older siblings because, well, um, she's very, very young as of episode one, and unfortunately she cannot keep up with them physically yet. She's also very unlucky at times, and things just seemingly go wrong around her. At the beginning of episode one, we will label Powder as true neutral. As stated earlier, she is simply the youngest sibling in her adoptive family, and she is mostly doing things for their approval. There isn't much else to go on, and that's actually fine. Also, just as a heads up, we will only be going by the lore as presented in Netflix's Arcane, and we will be not taking anything from the video games into account. And with that out of the way, let's go! Powder tags along with her sister Vi and adopted brothers Milo and Klagor. Despite her initial nerves and Milo calling her a jinx, she goes with the gang and helps rob Jace's penthouse. Neutral. Animals. Uncovering refined Hextex crystals, Powder accidentally sets off an explosion. This has a ripple effect throughout Zaun and Piltover, and with the guards on their heels, Powder escapes with the gang. Chaotic neutral. The gang is attacked on their way back to Zaun. Holding the loot, Powder is cornered by one of Deckard's minions. After her bomb fails, Powder tosses the treasure into the water and escapes. She was panicking and she didn't want to lose the treasure, but she was aiming for self-preservation. Vi doesn't actually hold it against her. Chaotic neutral. Where did you even get this tip? We just heard it at Benzo's shop. When confronted by her adopted father about the robbery in Piltover, Powder immediately folds and confesses they got a tip from Echo, despite Vi's insistence to not say anything. Neutral. You're right. There's a bunch of things Powder just can't do. You don't have to tell me twice. Powder overhears Milo ragging on her more in private. Misunderstanding the conversation, Powder confronts her sister about being unable to keep up. Vi confesses that everyone has bad days, especially if you know how this series goes. Neutral. Maybe just don't take powder next time. Yeah, Milo, maybe don't keep insulting the child who's that good with firearms. Look, I made them for the enforcers. These are smoke bombs, and those two are full of nails. Powder continues to hide and follow Vi's lead. She is, however, preparing for battle and eagerly creating new bombs to help her family in the battles ahead. Lawful good. Echo followed them. The old cannery next to the docks. Learning that Vander is captured and Vi and the gang are off to save him, Powder offers to join when she's told she isn't ready. She is given a flare and told to stay where she is unless she's in danger. I'll talk more about this later, just know that I am giving her tantrum here a very personal Nat 20 scene. This scene speaks to me a lot and I totally understand every emotion she's under here. Chaotic neutral. Feeling like dead weight and lashing out as a child would, Powder sees an unrefined gemstone and is inspired. Realizing she can actually be of help, she disobeys orders and goes after her sister. Chaotic good. With her family cornered, Powder uses the makeshift bomb with the gemstone. Now to be fair, Powder is trying to help her family out of a crisis. Unfortunately, the bomb kills Milo and Klagor and gravely injures a dozen of others, leading to the death of Vander. Chaotic good. 
My monkey bomb finally worked! Powder comes out, triumphantly declaring how she made the bomb. Only then does she realize in the carnage and debris that she has killed everyone. Horrified, she begins apologizing to her sister, who lashes out and calls her the one thing she dreaded being, a jinx. She begs and pleads not to be left alone in a gut-wrenching performance. In that 20 scene, chaotic good. It's okay. I'll show them. Abandoned and unaware Vi is being captured by Marcus, Powder is adopted into Silco's criminal organization, where she is then molded into Silco's agent. Now calling herself Jinx, she becomes the explosive criminal that is still haunted by the ghosts of her past. Neutral evil twice since several years have gone by. While toying with the firelights, which was beyond her original orders, Jinx is reminded of Vi by one of them. She has an episode and lashes out, hurting several people in the process. Chaotic neutral. One of those firelight wackos was a girl with pink hair. Jinx admits to Silco what happened when asked. She's honest and helps Silco with his condition, but is horrified when she is told to lay low and stay out of trouble. A sign of dead weight. Lawful evil. Do you have any idea what you've done? Actually, I do. Wanting to prove herself, Jinx sets fire to one of the buildings to draw the guards away from Piltover's ceremony that seemingly has a child inside. She steals a refined Hextech gemstone, eager to show Silco the goods. Neutral evil. <laughs> no. Jinx begins testing the refined Hextech. However, her efforts are causing her more PTSD episodes with the similar explosions. We see she's still haunted by her past and greatest failure. She wants to prove she's better than her sister, but when this fails, she lashes out and destroys an old training tool, Chaotic Neutral. With the clock ticking and Silco insisting she figured out how to work the gemstone, Jinx admits her latest episodes are lasting longer and harder. In a heart-to-heart, -heart, Silco gives Jinx a metaphorical baptism to wash away her past as powder, and help her forward. It does work as Jinx is finally able to figure it out. Neutral. It's your sister. She's back. She's looking for you. It's not what you think. She's with some girl enforcer. Guess she replaced you. You're lying! With Vi's return, Silco's gang begins acting tense. Jinx immediately figures something is up and harasses a bartender. She then tortures Sevika and discovers her sister is back, and, as a twist of the knife, Sevika tells Jinx she's been replaced. She takes it well, chaotic evil. Wanting to discover the truth, Jinx breaks away from Silco's group with the gemstone and lights the flare that she's kept for all these years. Vi comes and the sisters reunite after so long. Neutral. When Caitlyn, Vi's new ally, arrives, Jinx becomes suspicious. Suffering from an episode and the conflicting information from Silco and Vi, Jinx becomes wondering if Sevika was honest. The group is attacked by the firelights and Jinx begins blasting away, reveling in the chaos, but losing the gemstone. Chaotic evil. I can explain. Don't move, silly. Jinx starts unraveling as she tries to make sense of everything. She attempts to get answers from Silco by stabbing him with his medicine. She only calms down when Silco uses her trauma against her. Chaotic evil. Spying on her sister, Echo, and Caitlyn from afar, Jinx misinterprets a hug her sister gives to Caitlyn. Believing that Vi has lied to her after all, she attacks the bridge and everyone on it. Chaotic evil. Face to face with her former friend, Jinx battles Echo in a nat 20 fight. The visuals and storytelling are just top notch here, and it's another sad reminder that of what the war has done to cause these two friends to be pulled apart. In the end, Jinx sets off a bomb in close proximity, and she is able to critically wound Echo and take back the gemstone at the cost of her own health. Chaotic evil, nat 20 fight. 
Saved by Silco, Jinx is saved, but her mind is further broken by the operation involving Shimmer. It should be noted that this is now the third strike against her mental health. First her PTSD, then her hallucinations, and now the Shimmer. I'm choosing not to do anything special to the dings moving forward, but I will bring this up in the post-analysis. Healed, Jinx goes and captures Caitlyn after getting out of the shower. Hmm, chaotic evil. Is there anything so undoing as a daughter? Overhearing Silco pondering if he should give up Jinx to stop the brewing war, Jinx captures her father figure. She then goes to her sister and snatches her as well for one final test. Chaotic evil. Now, where should I sit? That's your choice, really. This scene is long and complicated and messy, and I love it. Jinx confronts Vi and forces her to make a choice between her old family, Powder, or her new potential one, Caitlyn. She claims her sister failed her and it was Vi that created Jinx all those years ago. She says she is willing to return as Powder if Vi gives up Caitlyn, and in turn, she will give up Silco. Unable to take the mounting stress, Jinx panics and starts blasting and accidentally kills her father. Chaotic evil, nat 20 scene. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh. I never would have given you to them. Not for anything. Don't cry. You're perfect. Horrified that she has once again made a grave mistake, Jinx is told by a dying Silco that he would not have given her up to the council, even if it would have given him everything he's ever wanted to accomplish. Now, Jinx has made her choice. In a Nat 20 scene, she goes to kill the council just as they're about to avoid a violent solution. Jinx might be one of the greatest accomplishments in writing that I've ever watched in a TV series. I don't think I've ever quite identified with a character like this before, and despite the cartoonish insanity in some places, I just can't really get over her. At a glance, many people probably think Jinx is defined by her insanity and the oh-so-crazy Harley Quinn attitude, and yeah, if we're going off of the old material, sure. But Arcane wisely decides to focus on exactly forged her into this rather than just going, ooh, those old mental health problems just come from nowhere, don't they? No, this Jinx is defined by her intimacy issues and her mistrust of those that she is closest to. Throughout her formative years, Powder was a character who tried desperately to keep up with her older siblings, who lived a lifestyle of survival of the fittest, and unfortunately, she just couldn't keep up due to her age and lack of strength. This led to tension among her siblings because she just couldn't do what they could, and her value in the family as the craftsman just wasn't working out either. Jinx was unlucky, yes, but she was still a child in way over her head, and that culminated into a massive inferiority complex. This freakout right here, this one in episode three, is the result of negative family attention, but she is also trapped in her own negative spiral. No one directly told her that she wasn't good enough, but she knows that she isn't. Those thoughts just eat at you and remind you constantly that you are a net negative on everyone around you. It's called invasive thoughts and it fucking sucks, dude. I, I totally understand this freak out. I've had this breakdown. Not exactly, but it hurts, and I appreciate just how hard this show absolutely understands how this works. When she ultimately fails and is rejected by Vi at the end of episode 3 and goes to Silco, she dedicates her whole life to him and his organization. Not because she finds it fun, although yes, she does find it fun, but it's because she wants and needs his approval. At this point, there is nowhere good to go. Jinx may be getting the dopamine from doing a good job, but believe me when I say that basic acceptance is not good enough for someone like us. She's got dad's love, but in her mind, it only exists while she's useful. Despite the fact that both Silco and Vi's love are likely unconditional for her, Jinx can't feel that at all because she doesn't value herself unless she is making progress. 
This results in insane bouts of jealousy and paranoia whenever someone new enters the picture. Like, the basic thought line is, what's that? Is that a new friend? Are they going to replace me? Am I obsolete? What are they saying about me? This is it. It's over. I'm not needed anymore. I'm just going to mess up again. It's not going to work out. It's over. I'm not needed anymore. Do you see what I mean? Funny enough and sad enough, Jinx actually kind of realizes this. We see Jinx try to self-correct her behavior herself when she realizes she's just being paranoid about Vi and has a goodbye hug with Caitlyn. It's just a goodbye hug. It's not like she's unreasonable. She knows that her situation isn't as bad as she thinks it is, but it's always that thought just scratching at the back of your head telling you that the worst case scenario is always going to happen to you. How the fuck did League of Legends demonstrate a perfect example of imposter syndrome with the fucking Harley Quinn wannabe from one of the most toxic games in existence? I'm sorry if I'm getting too personal here, but I think Jinx broke me and that Part of me can't wait for more. <laughs> I need to know if this girl is going to be okay. But probably not. And a weird sick part of my brain also doesn't mind if it doesn't work out. Like, I want the answer more than I want to know if everything's going to work out. I don't know how to end this video. I'm sorry.